today class, our topic for today is about the environment. What is environment? The term environment comes from the French word environ and means everything that surrounds us. The totality of the surrounding conditions for comfortable living of organism. Environment is the area which we live. What is natural environment? Natural environment is in which an organism lives naturally on the earth. In other words, wildness is called natural environment of the organisms. Wildness means that the organism lives and interacts with natural atmospheres such as earth, rocks, air, and etc. Why we need environment? Environment has played very important role to make able to survive for our biotic and abiotic component in Earth. While taking about the advantages of the environment, it has more benefit. Let take uh, example of benefit of it. We human being are social animal as well as powerful than other animals on Earth. Good environment is good for living things. Same as polluted environment is very harm, very harmful to living things. We human beings need, need food to live, air to breathe, water to drink, etc., which are getting from the environment. If there were no suitable environment on Earth, then it will be unable for the human to survive. There are two types of environment. The number one is the natural environment, and number two is man-made environment. When we talk about the natural environment, the components of natural environment are air, water, soil, land, radiation, forest, wildlife, flora and fauna, and etc. Let's go now to man-made environment. This is another type of environment. It includes transportation, housing, agricultural and livestock farms, aquatic forms, industries, dams, energy such as hydrothermal and nuclear energy plants. There are four components of environment. We have the abiotic components, we have biotic components, the biophysical components, and last but not the least, is the energy components. When we talk about abiotic components, the components which surrounds us, but these are not living. Abiotic components are non-living chemical and biophysical factors in the environment which affect the ecosystem. The abiotic components of an ecosystem can be listed through SWATS or the acronym of soil, water, air, temperature, and of course, the sunlight. Number two, the biotic components. Uh, components which surrounds us but includes living components. Biotic components include A. Producers, B. Consumers, and 3 or C. Decomposers. We have the biophysical components. Living and non-living components both are, when combined, they form biophysical components. It includes all the factors that have an influence on the survival, development, and evolution of organisms. For example, these components form A, marine environment, B, atmospheric environment, C, terrestrial environment, and let's now proceed to, to the last components of the environment. We have the energy components from the word itself, energy. It includes solar energy, geochemical energy, thermoelectrical energy, nuclear energy, 
etc. Common abiotic components. We have the atmosphere, water, air or wind, temperature and sunlight, and chemical elements. When we talk about atmosphere, the atmosphere of the earth is the envelope which surrounds us. Animals and other creatures breathe oxygen or filter it from water and plants grow because of the presence of carbon dioxide. It protects the earth from harmful ultraviolet rays coming from the sun. Water. All living organisms need some water intake. Water covers 70% of the Earth's surface and falls as rain or snow over land. In an environment with little water, only organism requiring a small percentage of water can survive. Other organisms thrive in conditions with large amounts of water, such as marine animals and plants in ocean. Water, take note of this. Water is the essential to survive, but every organism needs a different amount of water. Air or wind. Often, biotic factors are affected by other factors. Air or wind is consists of many gases. Some of these gases are essential for living, like the oxygen and carbon dioxide. The wind speed and direction affects the temperature and humidity of an area. It also carries seeds and aids pollination, spreading life. We have the temperature and sunlight. Temperature of the air and water affect, or affect rather, animals, plants, and humans in the ecosystem. A rise in temperature has the potential to change the way a living thing develops because it changes the metabol metabolic activities of the org organism. All living organisms have a tolerance level of temperature. A human would die if he stood out in minus 50 degree temperature. Light exposure often affects the temperature. Areas with direct sunlight are warmer. Chemical elements. Chemical elements act within the organisms or, or environment to impact what type of organisms can grow in the area. The chemical composition, including acidity level, has a large impact on the plants in an area. Chemical elements make up all matter, including other abiotic factors. We have the common biotic components, the producers, or the autotrophs. B, the consumers, or the heterotrophs. And C, the decomposers, the tritivores, the producers. They convert the energy by photosynthesis into food. They transfer light, water, carbon dioxide into energy. For example, plants. Consumers. They depend upon the producers. Occasionally, other consumers for food. For example, animals. The decomposers. They break down chemicals from producers and consumers, usually dead, into simpler form which can be reused. For example, microorganisms, the fungi, and the bacteria. Common biophysical environment. We have A, marine environment, and B, terrestrial environment. Marine environment. Saline water present on the Earth covers approximately 72% of the planet's surface. The ocean contains 97 of the Earth's water. It is the habitat of uh, 230,000 known species of animal and aquatic plants. Terrestrial environment. The environment belonging to the land 
as opposed to the sea or air. It includes the plants and animals grow up and develop on the surface of the earth. For example, human, animals, plants, crops, and others. Let's now proceed to the factors uh, responsible for change in environment. Number one, we have the deforestation for wood and bringing land under cultivation. This causes erosion of the soil. This activity has been going on from the past thousands of years. In another, the killing the gentle animals for food and fierce animals due to safety reasons. Number three, the industrial and scientific revolution in the recent past has the tremendous effect on the environment. This aspect is mainly responsible for polluting the water bodies with the chemicals from industry's waste. Four, a large number of episodes have affected the environment. The most important is London smog that killed 4,000 people in 1952. And number five, we have the nuclear catastrophes, including dropping of bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And other is awful gas tragedy due to smoke thus a layer is formed and cause many accidents. What are the effects of insecticides on the environment? Insecticides can accumulate in patty tissue of organisms through plants and vegetables, which has a disaster effect. The target insert develop resistance against insecticides after a period of time. The effectiveness of insecticides decreases in the manufacturing industries. Insecticides. The workers are affected by slow poisoning. Effect or effect of the insecticide. Effect of fungicides on environment. The fungicides in the soil increases number of harmful bacteria and decreases the population. Of useful fungi, certain fungicides are toxic to soil arthropods. Continued use of fungicides make the pest resistance to them. Mercurial fungicides are responsible for human poisoning and death. This happens when injection of flour and wheat seed treated with mercurial will lead to mercury poisoning. Effect of herbicides on the environment. Residue of herbicides in soil increases fungi account resulting in fungal disease. Herbicides are diseased to, to live stock with exposed to herbicide. Herbicides are extremely harmful to the human health. The earth is getting warmer. A relatively rapid increase in temperature has been documented during the past century. Both at Earth's surface and in the ocean, the average surface temperature of Earth as a whole has risen some 1.3 degrees Fahrenheit since 1850, the starting point for a global network of thermometers. Sea level are rising. Warmer temperatures not only cause glaciers and land ice to melt, adding more volume to oceans, but also cause seawater to expand in volume as it warms. Under a business as usual greenhouse gas emissions scenario, models indicate that sea levels could rise to feet or more by 2,100 compared to, to 1990 levels. The ocean is acidifying. Much of the carbon dioxide emitted by human activity has already been taken up by the ocean. Thus, moderating the increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. However, as a carbon dioxide dissolves in seawater, it forms carbonic acid. Acidifying the ocean, ocean acidification will likely cause serious, serious harm to such treasured marine organisms as, as corals, lobsters, and sea urchins. So, that's all for now, class, and I will give the activity uh, in your Google Classroom, okay?
So I hope you you learn a lot from my lesson for today. So long, class, and see you next week.